All right, let's go to the Verizon Wireless Hotline and talk to music mogul, Mr. Michael Malden. Uh, Michael, welcome to the show. Hey, Mojo, how you doing, man? Thanks so much. Oh man, it's great having you on. I heard about the uh, we met at the uh, at the at the racetrack in Phoenix. Yeah. At the at the drivers' meet, and you told me about this Fast Life Fridays you're having at the Atlanta Motor Speedway. Tell me about that. Well, you know what? We do something like once a month at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Ed Clark opened up his whole Friday night drags. And, and what I'm doing is really, it's all about the youth, man, and really opening up to more of an urban-leaning audience through motorsports and, and combining music and fashion and just technology and really creating more of an attraction. So, you know, we, we did it first in June, and we did it again a couple of weeks ago in July, and now we're getting ready to roll out again in August. And it's really exciting. We, uh, you know, we got celebrities out there drag racing each other uh we've got um you know artists performing on stage we've got different drivers that you know have came out and and you know supported us ricky gatson ricky gatson the bike rider you know supporting us and we've got people like carl edwards who i know has been a big topic that's very supportive (laughs) of the whole fast life movement and and scott speed that's whole supportive of so you know it's all about just cross-marketing Music, motorsports, fashion, and and the arts, really. At the end now, of the day, and would, would one of your end results being that there'd be more black, more African American uh, NASCAR fans? Well, ideally, yes. You know, I've been a fan my whole life. Grew up on it from North Carolina and followed it, and been following it like crazy. And I feel like that, you know, even though there's an outreach for drivers and you know and different people from vendors and stuff, I think the general audience, not just African American, but also Hispanic, and really just right. focusing on that group of folks and really like you know checking it out because if you go really deep into the community there's a lot of fans that people are not talking to or don't know about and what i'm doing with my agency malden brand agency is kind of expanding that and kind of you know taking you know uncovering it to be honest with you you know well i I think you know from a marketing point of view if you if NASCAR's, you know, core base is, say, from uh, Virginia down to Alabama, exactly. if you include, you know, Tennessee and, and Kentucky in there, if that's NASCAR's core base, in a third of those people in those states are black, and you're not paying any attention to them, you're, you know, you're missing out on a marketing opportunity, right? Well, there's, there's no doubt about it. I mean, you've got some real talented guys out here that obviously are racing. I mean, on the, you know, I'm from, again, from the hills of North Carolina and the Smokies. I mean, there's kids and young kids, young black kids that's out on these dirt tracks that people don't know anything about, that's riding motor, uh, you know, bikes that people right. don't know anything about. And it's kind of like, at the same time, they got families and friends that are supporting them. There's a kid out of California named David Sims Jr. right now that's doing go-karts. That's like, I think David's like 13 or whatever. That's amazing. Uh, that's been champion out there. You've got people, obviously, that, you know, like, you know, and I, and I see now, I mean, we got people like the Revolution Racing thing, which is involved in NASCAR. They're trying to create the, you know, Daryl Wallace and all that. And right, Darryl, well, you know, here, here, those, them guys are talented, too, but. Um, right, Daryl won a K&N East Series race. Plus, I, I was, Daryl Wallace Jr., that's a good name for a race car driver. Oh, it is. It's He's got, got <laughs> Daryl Wal- Waltrip, Rusty Wallace, and Junior Johnson all hey, in one name. <laughs> hey, man, and, 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 you know, there's no doubt about it. So he's got all three names in there, and he should be able to really, you know. Well, and, and that, right, that would be the thing that would really coalesce this all together if you had a <laughs> if you had a young, good driver on a good team, you know, and who was a real wheel man, that would bring a, a lot lot more different folks to the racetrack, right? Right, it would. But let me just say this, uh, you know, Mojo, and even when we talked and when I saw you in Phoenix and we talked, um, you know, I'm in. I'm in. The, my main thrust is the music business. I've been right. in the music business my entire life. I, you know, have been very successful in that. Signed Destiny Child. Um, you know, signed Alicia Keys. Had the Fugees. A lot of urban leaning artists. Was overseeing Mariah Carey's project. And through those years of me being president of Columbia Records, I always had my quote unquote season tickets for Charlotte or you know for Atlanta. Being that I was based out of Atlanta, but at right. the time operating in New York. And the thing is, is that I would talk to people about racing and motorsports that loved it but had never been to the track. So, you know, my concept now when I started creating the whole Fast Life Friday and that movement was to try to get 
people of like-mindedness to the track with a real focus on the youth because that's another thing. Uh, love my, all my associates and friends and the executives at NASCAR, but to be totally honest with you, we don't put enough emphasis on the youth, which is the future of the sport. Right. And I think that that crosses all kinds of lines and demographics, you know? Sure, Doc, because you got to have new uh, – us old guys are going to get older. You know? going to get older, man. <laughs> you know, there's no doubt about it. We do. I tell people all the time, I started – following NASCAR when I was six years old. And I've been doing this a long time. Don't know if anybody, people out there that knows me or know my name or look up and say, well, wow, how old is this guy? You know, I'm fortunate and been blessed to do what I do. But my passion has always been cars and motorsports and really trying to find a way to bring these worlds together. So in the world of which I live in, which is MTV, VH1, BET, right. all these video Every driver on that track now, whether it's Kyle Busch or whether it's Carl Edwards or even Jeff Garden or even Mark Martin, for that goes, has a love and passion for music and where it comes from. And deep down, whether it's hip hop or whether it's uh, R and B or whether it's country or whether it's pop, you're going to find a great contingency of folks. And I think that that entertainment value will help drive traffic to the NASCAR audience. You know what I'm saying? And I really believe at the end of the day, it will broaden what that audience is as we move forward over the next five, ten years. We're talking to Michael Malden. He's part of Fast Laugh Fridays at the Atlanta Motor Speedway. Now, Michael, you grew up in, up in the in the hills of North Carolina, and your father was a racer? Oh, my God. Yes, sir. He, my dad was a, a dirt track racer. Uh, God rest his soul. He just passed, man, about a month ago, you know, oh. and uh, from lung cancer. And he struggled with that, but he was also a long-haul tractor and trailer driver. Everybody in the uh, western North Carolina part, uh, you know, and then the deeper thing, this is how we get involved and what NASCAR is all about or where it started from. I don't know if people don't want to say it's what it's all about. But my dad, he wasn't a moonshiner, but he was a moonshine runner. And if folks... <laughs> Well, that, that's, no, that's the beginning of NASCAR that's right the there, Thunder no Road. And so, they, you know, my dad's name was Lightning. Uh, and, you know, and there's a, there's a track which right now is the oldest still operating dirt track in the south called Tri-County Speedway up in Murphy, North Carolina. And he basically was the reason that Tri-County Speedway was built and ran. It was one of those things people wanted to get behind Lightning and felt like right. he did what he did. And the thing that's so crazy back in that time, you're talking about the late 60s, early 70s, you know, there wasn't but a few African-Americans that you put your hands on, Wendell right. Scott, obviously, or whatever. But my dad was notorious in that area. So I grew up as Lightning's son, driving at the age of 14, you know, getting away with, with things that I probably shouldn't have been getting away with. <laughs> and, um, you know, I just learned to really be, I mean, I was like, I always felt either I was going to be a musician, a drummer, or I was going to be a race car driver. Well, ultimately, I ended up getting on the executive side and being a manager of entertaining right. artists. And my goal right now, again, as I said, is just to really cross-market these worlds and do it from a youthful perspective. So it's not about black, white, red, green, or yellow. It's about creating a movement of like-minded, and I call that the fast life. Through cars, through music, through technology, through video games, through it all, that's really where we're at. And, if, and we, as a supporter of motorsports, we gotta, we got to support that, man. Not just for Michael Malden's sake, for what I'm doing, but I'm just saying for the industry that we love, called NASCAR, called stock car racing, called motorsports, and really try to play that up. You know, seriously. 